Okay, a uh, little bit of repetition here, because this, this point is, in my experience as a teacher, hard to get at first, so sometimes I'll repeat myself. Um, you don't need a big, a big upward movement of your arms. I mean, I take it back on the clock face when I'm flexible. I'm not, I've been standing around a lot to doing this filming, so I'm not as flexible as I would be if I was going to play golf. But, but normally I take it to about 10.30 in the clock face, about like that, with my left arm. But for me to get there, I don't swing my arms up like this high. They only go, they only go away about 8 inches. In this direction, it would look like this. Away 8 inches. And they go up about the same amount, 8 to 12 inches. Probably 10 inches for me is about average. About that much. So I'll just demonstrate that. Here's the away. Now, watch my upper arms. Don't watch my, my club. Watch my upper arms, how they go up that much. Cock my wrists. And there I am. I'm about, about you know, maybe middle sternum height with the butt end of the club right about here. And then if I simply rotate on a, on a spine angle, you can't stand up, that changes all the angles. But if you rotate in your spine angle from there, then my shoulder turn brings it up to 1030. So basically, my hands and my arms, my arms pushing away and up a little bit, only raise my hands and the butt end of my club to about the 9 o'clock position, right about here. Probably more like 830 in reality. And I go from 830, 845 to 1030 with shoulder rotation. Now here's a big key key discovery that relates to why you've had trouble as a ball striker in the past. The same thing happens in the downswing. What brings your hands down is not an independent arm drop of massive proportions. There's a tiny one from gravity that kind of happens automatically if your pivot motion is correct. You don't need to pull your arms down, left either the left arm or the... You don't have to help out, in other words. All you got to do is get in the, top of, the proper top of backswing position, which we'll talk about more later, on what we call the turn right shoulder plane, which is there and simply shift and tilt, turn your hips, belly, and shoulders. All those movements brought my hands down almost to the hitting position. Now I'll turn more shoulders down, I am in the hitting position. So a lot of it's, it's almost all shoulder turn. Sure, there's a little gravity assist, maybe an inch or two of most of, of independent gravity motion, uh, gravity force causing a little bit of arm coming down. But for the most part, my tilt brings my hands closer to my body. My Tilt brings my hands, look at my right elbow, come closer to my body. My shift brings my hands closer to my body. My hip turn brings my hands, elbow closer. My belly turn, elbow closer. Shoulder turn, uh, elbow closer. And then from here, I've got connected arms. My right arm is glued to my chest from my elbow all the way up to my armpit. My left arm from the, from the upper part of my armpit is glued to my chest. I simply turn my shoulders as a unit, switching ends, we call it, with your shoulder girdle going like that, fast. And that's what hits the golf ball. That's your power source. You don't hit the golf ball with a slapping motion of your left arm or a, or a pu pushing motion with your right arm or wrist motion sideways or a wiping motion with your right arm angle. You hit the ball with a unwinding of your shoulder turn, which looks kind of like this. Like that. Like that. And uh, that was a pretty good drive right at the target, that second pole. That's what hits the ball. So that, that's how you keep your arms connected. Just don't do anything with your arms. So your transition is passive. You have to switch off your arm muscles, your forearm muscles, your elbow muscles, wrist muscles, 100%. Do nothing with those muscles. Leave them alone. Do nothing. Easy to say, hard to do.